Good afternoon. Welcome everyone to St. Matthew's Cathedral, especially to the, the priests can celebrating with, with Cardinal Gregory this annual Chrism Mass. We're glad that we can have at least more than we had last year. Um, we want to ask you to, as you see, to try to maintain distancing as far as possible, wear your mask except when receiving communion. And we invite you to sing, to sing gently, to sing at a conversational level um, following the homily, Cardinal Gregory will lead the priests in the renewal of commitment to priestly service, and then there will be the blessing of the oils. For the prayer over the chrism, the priests are reminded to extend their right hand at the proper moment. As it says in the program, the cue is the words royal, priestly, and prophetic. When you hear that, you'll extend your right hand. Then for the Eucharistic prayer, you'll remain at your places. Please offer the prayer sotto voce with the normal gestures of concelebration. And then for communion, our helpful guides will indicate which way to, to walk, to come forward, to receive by intinction from these tables in the front of the sanctuary. Anyone who's not concelebrating will receive communion on that side in front of the Blessed Sacrament Chapel. Thank you. Do you exist, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. My dearest brothers in the Lord, welcome to our cathedral for this Chrism Mass. It is a Mass that unites us more closely to the Lord, and especially to one another. Let us begin by asking the Father, in his compassionate love to forgive our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord. Graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen. Lectura del libro del profeta Isaías. El Espíritu del Señor está sobre mí, porque me ha ungido y me ha enviado para anunciar la buena nueva a los pobres, a curar a los de corazón quebrantados, a proclamar el perdón a los cautivos, la libertad a los prisioneros y a pregonar el año de gracia del Señor, el día de la venganza de nuestro Dios. El Señor me ha enviado a consolar a los afligidos, los afligidos de Sion, a cambiar su ceniza en diadema, sus lágrimas en aceite perfumado de alegría y su abatimiento en cánticos. Ustedes serán llamados sacerdotes del Señor, ministros de nuestro Dios, se les llamará. Esto dice el Señor. Yo les daré su recompensa fielmente y haré con ellos un pacto perpetuo. Su estirpe será célebre entre las naciones y sus vástagos entre los pueblos. Cuantos lo vean reconocerán que son la estirpe que bendijo el Señor. Palabra de Dios.
A reading from the book of Revelation. Grace to you and peace from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierce him. All the peoples of the air will lament him. Yes. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the Word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor he has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Once again, I welcome all of my brother priests to this Chrism Mass. This is the largest gathering of our presbyterate in over a year. And your presence is a source of joy to me, but also to the people of God who are viewing this Eucharist virtually. You bring a great spirit of hope and of joy to this local church. And it is an opportunity for me to thank you publicly and from the heart for all of your creative, generous ministry to our people during this past year. You have been faithful, loving, creative servants to God's people. And I personally thank and applaud you. I am also grateful for the presence of our auxiliary bishops, Bishop Mario and Bishop Roy. They too have been faithful and creative and generous in helping this local church weather the storms of the pandemic. I thank in a special way our Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Christophe Pierre, for his presence. And I thank him from the heart for all that he continues to do as a friend and a brother for this local church. And finally, I thank my predecessor, Cardinal Wuerl. Thank you, Donald, for being here and gracing us with your presence. When most of us were kids, we probably made any number of impassioned promises, such as we would always be best friends with someone whose name we may not now even remember. We pledged someone that we would forever keep a secret, something that is no longer a secret, or perhaps has even long since even been forgotten, along with all of those important reasons why it should have been a secret in the first place. In addition, the person from whom we learned that secret and the one to whom we made those childhood promises have long ago vanished from our memory and most likely from our lives. Promises made during adolescence, as solemn as they may be at that moment, are easily and often cast aside. Jesus Christ alone is the eternal faithful witness. He is, in fact, divine fidelity itself. He is the promise that we are privileged to celebrate each and every day of our lives. Moreover, His faithfulness is the very source of the reason that the church dares to call this entire week holy. Jesus' thorough connection with the vision of the prophet Isaiah is the inspiration that bids the church to consecrate and to bless the oils that will be used during this coming year throughout our five Maryland counties and in the District of Columbia. Jesus is still busy accomplishing the mission that he accepted from his Father and that he made his own as a young man in his home village of Nazareth. 
He is able to accomplish those things in the very way that we make him present in our ministry as priests and laity in his name. Jesus is faithful to his mission of healing, liberating, and sanctifying all those who seek him. He is sacramentally faithful to his promises through us and in our works of ministry and service. These oils that we will apply to the sick, to those who are preparing to join the church, to those who are consecrated by the church in baptism and confirmation, and those designated for sacramental ministry are the signs that Jesus continues his prophetic service to the world. It is a promise that he makes that he never forgets nor abandons. We are Jesus' hands, his eyes, and his voice in the world. He lives and functions in and through us. When we visit and comfort the sick, it is Christ himself who heals and forgives them. When we catechize and teach the young, it is Christ himself who explains the mysteries of God's kingdom to them and invites them to enter God's reign. When we bless and consecrate our brothers and sisters, it is Jesus who sanctifies them through our actions. Christ remains faithful to his promises through us. These sacred oils are signs of his power, expressions of his strength, and witnesses to his fidelity in this local church. We who are priests of the New Testament, who enjoy a special responsibility and a unique privilege in fulfilling Christ's faithful witness in our sacramental ministry. We have been chosen by the church and commissioned by the church to be ministers of word and sacrament. We have been united through the power of God's Holy Spirit to the priesthood of Jesus Christ himself. Our ministry allows us the privilege to serve Christ by turning over our lives for the life of our church. We have made sacred promises that we would be men for others, that Christ could have his way with our lives, that we will live as signs of the kingdom of God in the midst of the world in which we live. Today in Eucharist, we will publicly renew those promises. Each one of us made those sacred promises as younger men than we are today, any number of years ago. And we need to renew them as a reminder to ourselves and to the pre people that we are privileged to serve that we wish to be faithful witnesses as Christ is himself. We cannot possibly live out those promises all on our own. We need one another for encouragement and support. We need the prayers and the collaboration of our people for strength. And we need the abiding grace of the Holy Spirit to accomplish this ministry. Therefore, this afternoon, we will once again renew the promises to be God's men, Christ's priests, and servant ministers of this local church. We take these promises seriously, and we implore the one who is the perfectly faithful witness to guide our hearts and minds so that we might 
be more dedicated in our service to those whom he has chosen to love and to serve in and through us. Again, I welcome you to this Chrism Eucharist, just seeing you assembled in prayer gives my heart joy and hope. I now invite all of our priests to please stand and all others to remain seated. Beloved sons, my dearest brothers, in remembrance of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people, the promises you once made. Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of him you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? Are you resolved to be faithful stewards to the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain but moved only by zeal for souls. Will the assembled please stand? As for you, dearest sons and daughters, please pray for your priests that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. And please pray also for me, that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. God, Father of all consolation, who will to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body so that by your holy blessing, everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body and soul and spirit may be freed from all pain and all infirmity 
and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for your sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. O God, strength and protection of your people who have made the oil you created a sign of strength, graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it so that receiving divine wisdom and power, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your son. They may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian life, and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters, they may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God, the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil so that all who are outwardly anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. God, author of the sacraments and bestower of life, we give you thanks for your ineffable goodness. For in the ancient covenant, you foreshadowed the mystery of sanctifying oil. And in the fullness of time, you will that it might shine forth uniquely in your beloved son. And when your son, our Lord, had saved the human race through the Paschal mystery, He filled your church with the Holy Spirit and wonderfully endowed her with heavenly gifts so that through her, the work of salvation in the world might be brought to completion. From that time onward, through the sacred mystery of chrism, you have so bestowed the riches of your grace upon all humanity that your sons and daughters born again in the cleansing waters of baptism, 
are strengthened by the anointing of the Spirit and conformed to your Christ, they share in his prophetic, priestly, and kingly office. Therefore, we beseech you, O Lord, that by the power of your grace, this mingling of fragrance and oil may become for us a sacrament of your blessing. Pour out in abundance the gifts of the Holy Spirit on our brothers and sisters anointed with this oil. Adorn with the splendor of holiness the places and things signed by this sacred, by sacred oil. But above all, by the mystery of this oil, bring to completion the growth of your church until she reaches the measure of fullness in which you, resplendent with eternal light, will be all and all with Christ in the Holy Spirit forever and ever.
My brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, sacrifice of your hands, hands for, the for the praise and glory of his name, name, for our, our good and the good of all this holy church. church. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, high priest of the new and eternal covenant and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, with Mario and Roy, our auxiliary bishops, with Donald William, our retired archbishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in, in the sleep of peace. Sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, Fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be
Let us pray. We beseech you, almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. After the recessional, our priests are asked to remove their vestments and leave them in their pews. Then please wait as the guides dismiss each row. Oils will be distributed downstairs as you exit. And I take this opportunity to wish all of you and the people you serve so generously a blessed triduum and an Easter season filled with peace and good fortune. I hope that you will join me in praying that next year the restrictions will be lifted, we will be together in a more wonderfully fraternal way. I thank Ron for the always gracious welcome to our cathedral and the wonderful cathedral musicians and the readers and the servers. Our seminarians were those who took uh, the, the blessed oils away. They left mass early, which is not a good tradition <laughs> to foster, but they will be helping to uh, prepare the oils. And again, I thank all of you for being present. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.